Welcome back to Great SpaceX. Today we're going to be talking about why the SpaceX lunar mission is more important than you think. The 2000s saw several super wealthy individuals spend a fortnight on the ISS, or the International Space Station. That particular era of space tourism ended in 2009 when spare seats on Russian rockets were bought up for the exclusive use of NASA astronauts. The second golden age of space, however, is rapidly approaching as the billionaire space barons Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson have given the industry a cachet not seen since the Apollo era of the 1960s and 70s. In fact, back in May of 2020, SpaceX made history as the first private company to send humans into space. This marks not only a tremendous technological achievement, but also the first indication that an entirely new space for space industry, that is, goods and services designed to supply space-bound customers, could be close at hand. The space industry bets on commercial space, and the rise of a series of private space companies like SpaceX will reduce the cost of spaceflight, ensuring more people can reach the stars. SpaceX now is heading to Mars, but before they get there, they'll need to make an important pit stop on the moon. Why is that? Because it's one of Earth's closest habitable neighbors and provides an opportunity to gain valuable experience for missions to Mars and beyond. They've continued to work on developing Starship, the rocket that represents a next generation vehicle that is key to Musk's dream of space exploration. With that said, we must mention one of the space conquests, which is the Dear Moon Project. It is a lunar tourism mission and art project conceived and financed by Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa. It will make use of a SpaceX Starship on a private spaceflight flying a single circumlunar trajectory around the moon. The project was unveiled in September of 2018, and the flight is expected to occur no earlier than 2023. According to Musk, in addition to the historic first as a private lunar mission, the rocket's flight path means it will go beyond the distance traveled by the Apollo missions. He added, This mission we expect people will go further than any human has ever gone from planet Earth. For years, NASA has placed the lives of its astronauts in the hands of SpaceX to reach the ISS, relying on the company to supply the space station and placing its precious scientific missions atop their rockets. This relationship became even stronger when NASA announced it selected SpaceX's Starship to land humans on the moon as part of the agency's Artemis program. According to the latest update, NASA astronauts will launch on a separate rocket and rendezvous with Starship in lunar orbit to go down to the lunar surface and back to orbit. In theory, if SpaceX's Starship can land on the moon, it can ferry humans there as well. There's no need for the Space Launch System and Orion at all. But NASA's not ready to say goodbye to those vehicles just yet for some reason. First, regarding the technical, SpaceX has yet to show that Starship can reliably land its booster stage upright, as it did with the Falcon family of rockets. Its booster, the aptly named Super Heavy, has yet to fly. NASA is not yet ready to launch its astronauts on such a new system, though that could change over time. Additionally, vehicles returning to Earth from the moon hit the atmosphere at much higher speeds than they do when returning from Earth orbit. However, up to now, Starship has yet to successfully land from Earth orbit, let alone lunar orbit. Which brings us to the second reason, my most favorite of all, politics. SLS is also known by another name, the Senate Launch System. The name alone evokes many things. Cost efficient is not one of them. The current plan for Artemis is thus an artful mix of political and technological compromises. And if Starship succeeds in returning humans to the lunar surface, NASA will gain a lunar lander at a fraction of the cost of the Apollo-era lunar module. And SpaceX, a private entity, would gain independent access to the lunar surface, a locale previously the domain of a single nation. Interestingly enough, investing in Starship won't only help NASA return to the moon, but also do something more consequential. And as I said earlier, SpaceX's Starship is designed to be much more than a lunar lander. 
It's actually an end-to-end -end transport system designed to ferry people to Mars. The Moon and Mars represent markedly different environments and challenges. The Moon is far closer to Earth, allowing astronauts to stay in what is basically real-time communication with the ground. They can return home in a matter of days if something goes wrong. There are launch opportunities roughly every month, and Mars offers no such conveniences. Communications are delayed by tens of minutes, requiring significant increases in spacecraft autonomy. Launch windows are limited to once every two years when Earth and Mars are optimally aligned. And more importantly, landing on Mars with its thin atmosphere and significant gravitational well is a far harder problem to tackle than landing on the Moon's airless expanse. Nevertheless, the Moon can be useful for developing and testing the hardware and techniques needed to send humans to Mars. That is, if missions to the Moon are deliberately pursued with Mars in mind. It is all too tempting and cheaper for engineers to optimize for Moon-only solutions in a tight budgetary environment. Luckily, the addition of Starship to Artemis can spurn this temptation. I said spurn. SpaceX is a new breed of aerospace company, one with ambitions beyond that of serving government needs. As a privately held company, it is under near total control by its founder, Elon Musk, who can pursue his agenda as long as it makes money. His agenda happens to be human settlements on Mars. Whether this is a feasible goal is besides the point. SpaceX has a highly capable workforce. It is well capitalized and it is building a Mars-bound ship through Starship, whether or not NASA chips in. So by choosing Starship, NASA is gaining a partner with shared long-term goals that is going to Mars regardless of current domestic politics. Both sides benefit. SpaceX will enjoy a significant cash infusion in Starship and will gain access to the lunar surface. NASA will save billions of dollars on a lunar lander while supporting a Mars initiative. With Starship, NASA isn't only just buying its ticket to the moon, it's also investing in a shuttle to Mars. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.